the six things that God hates, which seven is an abomination. One, proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that be swift to running into mischief, false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Good evening, everybody. Happy Sabbath and happy Sabbath. We are, remember last time we looked at chapter 5, when it talks about the um, warning against um, the woman in immorality. Now, chapter 6 Warnings against foolishness. That should be pretty straightforward. So basically, think of it as you having to you're trying to become close with somebody who is foolish you know psalms 14 verse 1 says the fool has said in his heart there is no god yes that kind of foolishness let's get into it my son if thou be shorty for thy friend if thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger thou art snared with the words of thy mouth thou art taken with the words of thy mouth do this now, my son, and deliver thyself when thou art into the hand of thy friend. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. So basically, um, whenever you have a, not a friend, but here, it's talking about foolishness. Um, and if you decide to make, I would say, friendship or make a pledge with somebody who is living in foolishness, who is a fool, basically you have snared or ensnared yourself. You have basically captured yourself. You have pledged allegiance to that person. Then there is no going back, in a sense. Well, when I say no going back, meaning if you make a promise to do something, you have to keep that promise until it's over then you can decide not to do it anymore. But if you did make that promise, unfortunately, you cannot basically deliver yourself because you are in that promise. You cannot um, be arrogant because you are still bound by that promise, that pledge that you made with foolishness. Now, foolishness can be your friend, your wife, your family members, or your classmates, churchmate. Um, yeah, it can be anybody that lives in accordance with, not accordance with God's principle. Okay? So, when it comes to that part, to that part, you cannot be boisterous. You cannot be um, arrogant. Because when you are, f- so here's what happens. When somebody is a fool, they, they are always arrogant because they think they know better. Until they find out they didn't know anything, then they humble themselves. So when you make friendship with a fool, be humble. Don't try to be arrogant. Give the verse number four. Give not sleep to thine eye, nor slumber to thine eyelid. Meaning, basically, um, Always try to find a way to get out of that promise. As soon as it's over, keep your eyes open. Don't sleep on it. Meaning, meaning, um, let me see here. Yeah, meaning whenever. Now, of course, um, people may not be able to know that. But what what happens is, most people that are fools, they won't know it. So, to give not sleep to thine eyes. What that means is, if you you know when you have like an exam, and you need to actually study for it, what do you do? You do all you can to stay awake. Same way here, if you do know that the person you had made that pledge with, um does not live according to God's principle and you know that for sure 
it is best to keep your eye open that way if that person does something stupid or foolish you can find a way not to be there when it happens for instance the person wants to go smoke weed and you know you don't smoke weed if they ask you to come with them for a ride just say no because you know more likely they're gonna be smoking weed if you can find a way not to be with them in certain time just say no that way if they get caught you're not among them that happens next verse number six verse number five deliver thyself as a roll from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler so it's not actually a literal roll or a little bird but you know when it comes to um being a prey you can be a prey to anything you can be a prey to your husband be a prey to your wife to your children work vacation house anything you can become a prey so what you need to do is you need to find you need to find a way oh let me see here my bad you need to find a way to get out of the hunter's hand because the hunter all that he's doing is looking for something or somebody to prey on. The fowler is the same way, right? He goes, um, ah, what is the name of the other one? Falcon. They always prey on smaller birds. So you need to stay away from where the danger is lurking. Verse number six. Go to the ant. Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise. What, what does the slugger do? Always be singing. You know that fable from um, the slugger and the ant? So, the slugger in the time of summer, always singing while the ants are gathering food for the winter. Consider her ways and be wise. Why? Because the fool think they know better right here which on the 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 end they have no guide no overseer or ruler right but what happens it provide they provided her meat in the summer and gathered her food in the harvest i just mentioned that from the fable of the slugger and the and the ant if you don't if you don't if you don't, if you don't know that that fable go ahead and google fable the poetry, the slugger and the ant. Something like that, you're going to find what it is. Verse number 9. How long will thou sleep, O slugger? When will thou arise out of thy sleep? It's basically, to the people who are working with foolish people, how long are you going to sleep? Remember, my bad, remember we just read earlier what? Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelid. So, you as a slugger, how long will you behave like a slugger? How long will it take you to see that the ant is wise and you are fool? Right here. So, we need to stop be, be, being slugger, but we need to start being ant. Be wise in our ways. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, verse number 10, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and that want and thy want as in as an armed man. Basically, you do not when you don't do what you're supposed to do, you're gonna live as a poor person. Meaning not poor as you can be poor one, poor as materially materially speaking. Or mindful speaking, mindful speaking. Then you won't be smart, you won't be wise or rich in mind. You'll be poor because you do not behave like an ant, but like a slugger. A a naughty person, a wicked man, walketh with a forward mouth. We've been looking at that word forward, meaning a bad thing. You do not want to have vowed mouth. He winketh his, with his eyes, he speaketh with his feet, he teacheth with his fingers. 
Frowardness is in his heart, he deviseth mischief continually, he soweth discord. What does that mean? This person winketh with his mouth, speaketh with his feet, and teacheth with his finger. Well, we already know that your eyes is, you can use that to, you know, to do this. But how do you speak with your feet? Well, wherever you go, wherever you go, you are basically speaking of what kind of character you have. If wherever you go is where people are doing bad stuff, that shows your character. Unless God sends you himself. But if you are going to the club, you are going to smoke, you are going to places where people cuss, where people get drunk, and do some nasty thing, that's your character. And you and teach it with his mouth, with his fingers? Well, the hand, the work of his hand, the work of your hand tells who you are. Frowardness in his heart. He is basically dead inside. He is basically a cemetery inside. He has nothing good that comes out of, of, out of his mouth. Like Prophet said, out of, out of the abundance of her heart, the mouth speak. So the person who decides who, who devises mischief and, dis, and sows discord, that's pure evil. That's basically Satan himself who was sowing discord in heaven. Verse number 15. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These now, right? Suddenly, this ca his calamity comes suddenly, he shall be broken without remedy. Funny, whenever people do what is evil, at a certain point of time, the calamity falls upon them. Listen to this. This is Satan right here, as I mentioned earlier. These six things does the Lord hate, yea, Seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that deviseth wicked imagination, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Isn't that interesting? We have six things the Lord hate. But once you get to seven, it becomes an abomination. Number one, who? A proud look. The worst people are the first people that God will destroy or would set his face against as quickly as possible is a proud person. Second one, a lying tongue. Lying. Three, hands that shed innocent blood. If you like to kill people, unfortunately, you are number three. A heart that devises wicked imagination. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Feet that be swift to in running to mischief. A false witness that speaketh lies. So basically, let's say you are in a, in a tribunal and somebody says, Oh, we have a witness and that person is speaking a bunch of lies. And he that soweth discord among brethren. What does that mean? He that soweth discord. What was Satan doing in heaven? Yes. So, what was Satan doing in heaven? He was sowing what? Discord. Meaning he was trying to get people against each other in heaven. One day we're gonna we're gonna look at those six things and more in depth because this is something I want I would like you guys to actually know. If the six things that God hates, which seven is an abomination: one, proud look, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked imagination, feet that be swift to running into mischief, false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren and again it was the open veil tv food for thought